What's the worst thing that your mom cooked? Catfish. I hate catfish. Pancakes. Probably a burnt sandwich. She don't know how to cook that much. Definitely spaghetti. Pot roast, any type of pot roast. I don't want it. How tall is your mommy? I have no idea. If you had to guess, how tall would she be? Two inches. Four inches long, six, uh, two. What's your mom's hidden talent? If shopping is a hidden talent, probably shopping. Mm, discounts. She's always finding discounts. Cookies. What makes your mommy happy? Um, her bed. What? Her bed. Her bed? When you were a kid, what did your mom say to you when you got in trouble? Ah, hijo de mi vida, ¿qué estabas pensando? Forget the bell, I'll out the bell and thank me. I'm gonna get the bell. <laughs> I'm not going to go to Disneyland next week. Honey, Ruth. What does your mom's laugh sound like? <laughs> a frog. Like, <laughs> like that. Kind of like a. <laughs> um, like squeaky. It sounds like a dying roach. Who's the boss in your house, mommy or daddy? Yeah. <laughs> mommy. I'm mommy. How old is your mommy? Uh, pretty good. Thanks. Eleven. Ninety-nine. <laughs> um, I yeah yeah. Oh, oh. What is your mom not good at? Driving. <laughs> Speaking in English, like me. Loving, caring, and she's always there for me. Funny, nice, and kind. Absolutely, amazingly caring. Uh, loving, kind, and passionate. Keep God first in everything that I do. Follow your dreams and not, never let no one bring you down. To get to know Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. Uh, she works very hard how loving and how caring and how um, thoughtful she is towards other people. She cleans the house. She's very lovey-dovey and she really likes to um, love and she really cares about people. I love you and thank you for always supporting me and being there no matter what. I love you and you're the best mother I could ask for. I would tell her that I love her and she's been a great mother. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, Mommy. Love you, Mommy. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Mommy, te amo. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you, Mommy. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Te amo. Can you say love you, Mama? Yeah, Mama. Happy Mother's Day to my mom who is now in heaven. I miss you so much. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Love, love you, Mom. You, Mom. Bye.
Let's give it up for all the moms this morning. Happy Mother's Day. And I want to give a shout out to those of you behind the camera. Thank you for joining us today online. And especially, let's give a big welcome to our 430 campus today. Well, good morning. Um, and really, happy Mother's Day to all of you moms. Um, I know that today is a very special day in its emotions, um, emotions of joy and appreciation and love for the moms in our life. But today also, I know, is a day of sadness for some of you. Um, you might be in a season, this is your first Mother's Day without your mom. Um, you might be in a season of longing to become a mom. And you might be in a season as a mom that's just challenging right now. And whatever season you're in, I just want to come this morning and encourage you and, and let you know that you are loved, you are beautiful, you are amazing, you're doing an awesome job, you're doing a better job than you think you are. And I also want to encourage you to be like a succulent. Um, succulents, and some of you may not know this, but a succulent is a symbol of tenacity, strength, and selflessness love. And so I want to look at those words real quick. Tenacity is simply the quality or fact of continuing to exist. It's determination. So no matter what season of life you're in right now, I want to encourage you to be determined. Know why you exist. Know that God is in you. And know what God has called you to do right now in the now. Don't worry about tomorrow and what that holds. Just be determined to complete today and in, be in the now, and God is with you there. Um, I want to encourage some of you right now, just after service, um, find why you, you exist. And we do that here at City Hope through Growth Track. Uh, step two is today, and that's where we help you discover your God-given gifts and talents. And we give you the opportunity to use those to serve and love others. Um, the second thing about... Uh, succulence is strength. Strength is the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force or pressure. It's firmness. So remember today, your strength is not your own. Your strength comes from God. He's in you and he is the one that gives you strength. In Psalm 28, 7, it says, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all of my heart. He helps me. My heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thankfulness. He is your strength today. And then selfless love. Selfless love is simply, no matter what the circumstance, you stand in love. You love others well, but you also love yourself well. And I know that second part sometimes for some of us is harder than the first part, loving ourselves. And I went to Mark 12, 30 through 31, just as a great reminder. And it says, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And as I was looking at that and studying, um, I read through a passage or like it was a lesson on that verse, but it was just talking about how a lot of times we have a hard time loving ourselves because we don't see ourselves as God sees us. So I want to encourage you to love God more, get to know him more. And as you do that, you will begin to see yourself as God sees you. And when we are able to love ourselves, we are able to love others no matter what situation or what circumstance that we're in. We can walk in love towards others when we can love ourselves well because we love God well. So I just wanted to encourage you, start the morning off by encouraging you with that. And I know some of you are like, so why is she comparing us to a succulent? That's kind of interesting. But so today, as we were preparing for the day um, here at City Hope, we just love to bless you and just have a little bit of fun. And we like to give gifts on Mother's Day to all the ladies. And as we were talking about that with our team, uh, somebody brought up succulents. And I kind of got excited about it because I do think succulents are really cute. They're the tiny, if 
if you don't know what they are, most of you I'm sure do, but there might be some men that don't. Um, the tiny little plants, they're really little, and they're just cute to me. So when they mentioned succulents, I kind of got excited about it. And so as a team, we decided that that would be a perfect little gift for every adult lady. As you leave today, you'll get a little succulent just to kind of remember the day and know that City Hope loves you, God loves you, and hopefully it's a good reminder. Um, they are real ones, and I know that might be a challenge for some of us, um, me included. Fake ones are my favorite because I can't kill them, but we gave you, we're giving you a real one, and I know you can do it. You can keep it alive. Um, but as we started talking about it that day, um, we made that decision, and Ben and I were driving to our oldest son's baseball game, and I, I really don't know why other than the Holy Spirit led me to, but I started researching succulents. And I was very intrigued by some of their characteristics. And so I like started making all these notes and um, just like really taking screenshots of different things about succulents. And I started sharing it with ben, Pastor Ben. And I was like, hey, so Mother's Day, we're giving out succulents. I think it would be awesome if you preached a message on succulents. And how we can learn life lessons from succulents. And you see how that went. <laughs> here I am. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be here, but now I know I will keep my excitement to myself from here on out. Um, because now I get to share with you life lessons from succulents. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. I, I was intrigued by it, and so I hope you are too. So the first thing that we can learn from a succulent is to be rooted in God. With succulents, I learned that healthy roots help them stay in place and protect them from harsh environments and harsh conditions. Succulents can grow where many other plants cannot grow. And the roots of succulents keep them intact, whether they're shallow roots or deeper roots, they still keep them intact and also they carry essential minerals and water to the succulent. And so for us in life, whether our roots are deep or shallow, we have to be rooted in something. And when we're not rooted in something, when things come our way, we will shift easily. And so we must root ourselves in God and His Word. And so when seasons, trials circumstances beyond our control, they're going to come our way. But when we're rooted in God and when we're rooted in his word, we will not shift and we are able to stand firm in him and the promises that he has given to us. In Colossians 2 verses 6 through 7, it says, and now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So we have a choice when we are rooted in him, no matter what circumstances come our way, we can choose to keep our roots deep and grow in him in every area of our life. Um, for us, as I was preparing, I thought back to just seasons of our life where they were really hard. Um, some of those especially were when we lost the loss of a parent. Um, early on in our marriage, Ben's mom passed away. Um, and I, even during that, I remember thinking, he walked in peace through that. And I myself thought, how does he, like, that's hard. Like, it affected me, but it was his mom, so it affected him a little more. But then a year and a day later my dad passed away and I was able to make that choice like he did, even though it was a very challenging season and very emotional, emotions are real, but we were able to choose to walk in the peace that God gives us because we were rooted in him. And so I just want to encourage you with that. Be rooted in God, whether your roots are shallow, and that just means you're a new believer. You're just starting to learn. You're just starting to grow in God. Or if you have deep roots, you've been walking this journey for a really long time, be rooted in Him. Be rooted in His Word so when those seasons come, when trials come, when storms come, you will not shift because of your roots. They are deep in Him. 
John 15, 5 says, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So let's remember, root ourselves in God and you can do great things. The second life lesson from a succulent is to store up God's living water. Succulents actually store water, so when dry seasons come, they have nutrients to to sustain them. Um, I think many times when we're first saved, we have this feeling inside, and it's like refreshing, and it just feels good. We've just given our life to the Lord, and we can really feel Him. We're filled to the fullest. Um, in, in John 7, 38, it describes that. It says, anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Because when we come to believe in him, he is the living water. So he is in us. He is in our heart. And he never goes away. He is always there. But sometimes we go through seasons of life where we might feel dry. And that's simply because we're maybe not drinking from the living water on a daily basis. It is very important to drink his living water every day so that we can still feel his presence. Because he's there, whether we feel him or not, he's there. But in order to feel him more, we must drink from the living water every day. And so we're going to go to Isaiah 12, verses 3 through 6. And that, that scripture gives us six ways that we can simply drink his living water every day. So Isaiah 12, 3 through 6 says, With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. In that wonderful day you will sing, Thank you, Lord. Praise his name. Tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy, for great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. What Isaiah 12 tells us is, number one, give thanks to the Lord. Continually remind yourself every day what he has done for you. It might be little things that he's done for you. It might be huge, big things that he's done in your life. It might literally be, thank you, Lord, for another day. Whatever it is, thank him daily. When we thank him daily, we are actually saving ourselves from being unthankful and for feeling worse because thankfulness is drinking that living water and just inviting him in every day and it will refresh us inside. The second thing that Isaiah 12 tells us to do is to simply call on his name. All throughout the day, call on his name. I love our worship services here at City Hope and they are amazing. It just makes you feel good and I love worshiping together as a church family But we also need to take that home with us and worship at home and call on his name at home. When we say, oh, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for whatever it is you're going through. Just exalt his name in that. Even if it's a hard situation, God, I thank you for your peace. Um, Jesus, I thank you for your patience right now as I'm dealing with my child who's throwing a big one. Um, just all like, thank him, invite him in, drink his living water every day. The third thing we can do to drink of the living water is make his deeds known to others. And that's very simple. It's just sharing your testimony. I know many of us, all of us have a testimony of some sort that we can share with others. And when we share our testimony It's reminding us of what he's done, but it's encouraging others of what he can do in their life. So make his deeds known to others. And the fourth thing, remind people his name is exalted. No matter the situation, no matter the diagnosis, no matter what circumstance you're facing, Jesus' name is greater than anything that you can face in life. And so when we exalt his name, 
it is reminding ourselves and others that his name is greater and we are drinking from his living water every day when we do that. The fifth thing is sing praises to him. And I kind of touched on this already, but not just on Sundays do we sing praises to him. Fill your home with worship to him. Fill your car with worship to him. It will change the atmosphere every time. Like, I promise every time. I could give story after story of how this has affected us in our own home. Um, our son, our oldest son, he, not our oldest son, our second son, he cried a lot. He was almost colicky. And like, there was a time it was like, I could literally, nothing was making him quit crying. And I turned on a worship song and I'm not making it up. It was like instant. He stopped. And so from then on, really, every time he would start this cry, I knew that I couldn't fix it. And the only thing that would was that it was the song I played was It Is Well. And that's what fixed it. Um, because it was God's presence into his little tiny body, inviting that living water in. And then I like to encourage you, if you're not sure what song to play, my favorite right now is the one we did last, the I Speak Jesus. It's just powerful. You're just speaking Jesus' name over everything in your life. And I promise you, when you drink of the living water like that in your home, in your car, you will feel his presence and things will change. When we fill our minds with junk, things begin to seem murky. But if we turn on the praise to him, his living water, the living water will clear up whatever it is that we're thinking, whatever it is we're going through. Um, as I was preparing and I was going through this for the first time, I got to that spot and I was reminded a few weeks ago of our pool. Um, we realized that we have a very bad drainage problem and it was a muddy mess. I, like it wasn't just murky, it was like mud, like for real. Pools are supposed to be pretty and blue and clear and all the things and it was a mud, mud puddle but a big one. And I started to panic because I was like, we're going to have to literally drain the whole entire thing and fill it back up with clean water because there's no way to clean this mess up. And Ben calmed me down quickly and was like, I promise it's okay. We'll figure it out. You know, we got this. And it was amazing to me because all we did, he did, um, <laughs> was go to our, the, like the pump system thing and pull out the filters. There's four filters and they were disgusting. They were caked with mud and he washed those filters off and they became clean. And then that pump itself, we cleaned it at like emptied it of the dirty water and put clean water in. And the pump is not, I mean, I'm not tall and it's shorter than me. So it's not real big, but put clean water in that. And it wasn't overnight, but within a week, our muddy mess was perfectly clear again from that clean water from the pump being filtered through the pool. Honestly, I don't know how, how that works. I don't understand it. But when I, th when I was going through this, I like visuals. And to me, that was a perfect visual of what God, his living water will do for us when we're feeling murky in our mind Drinking of his living water through shouts, like through praising him, through worship, will clear things up for us faster than we think. The sixth thing that we can learn about drinking living water is simply to cry out to him and give him a shout. These last two kind of go hand in hand, but when we're faced with times where you don't even feel like you can pray, and your thoughts are full of anxious thoughts or depression or, you know, whatever it is, evil thoughts, if we will speak loudly, like a lot of times we like to pray like in our mind and that's okay. But sometimes when our mind is so filled with thoughts of just anxiousness or depression or whatever it might be, we can't pray over that. It's hard. So if we will speak loudly we will pray loudly, shout his name, it will silence those thoughts in our mind. Um, the enemy cannot, he cannot fill your mind with thoughts of 
anxiety, depression, whatever it is, he cannot fill your mind with those thoughts when you are speaking out loud the name of Jesus. Um, it's, it's actually impossible. Like it's impossible to think a thought and speak something else at the same time. A lot of times, you know, people will say, I lost my train of thought. Maybe y'all don't, but I lose my train of thought all the time. Um, I'll be thinking about something and like my kids will come ask me a question or I'll just start another conversation. And literally the minute I start talking, my thought is gone. And it's like, what was I even thinking? What was I supposed to do? Do y'all ever do that or just me? Okay, good. Um, but, but really the reason why is because we are thinking just up here, but then we start verbalizing something different. And so it's gone. We might find it again, but if it's a thought from the enemy, we don't want to find it again. So we just keep speaking, crying out to Jesus, giving him a shout and it will clear up our mind. So drink of the living water every day. So the third life lesson from a succulent is to be adaptable and resilient. One of the very first things I read about a succulent was that they are resilient and even if their leaves and stems or even the roots, if they're damaged at all, they can still press on through care like watering and sunlight and they can still press on and they can thrive. So let's remember for us, let's remember that nothing in this life is for no reason at all. Let's press on and thrive in what God has in store for you. 2 Corinthians 4.8, probably one of my favorite verses. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. So the enemy might try to come against us. He might try to crush us, but we are resilient. We are adaptable and God is in us and we, we can thrive no matter what we're facing Another interesting fact about these tiny little plants um, is that stressing a succulent is actually what brings out the color that it is capable of turning. Um, so you see them, sometimes they're different colors. Stressing the succulent brings out that color. So what if we look at the stress in our lives that way? I know that stress is not fun, but we all encounter it occasionally. And what if we allow our stressors to actually show us what we are capable of with God in us and by our side? What he can do in us and through us for, through the stress that we're facing, let it show what he's capable of in us. The last and final lesson that we can learn from a succulent is embrace the change. Seasons are temporary. So you can take a leaf of a succulent that is in poor condition and repot it in fresh soil, care for it, and eventually it will become a beautiful plant. This process I read, um, it says that it could take a long time and sometimes you, it'll be weeks and it's like nothing is happening. I thought that they said I could do this and nothing is happening, but if if you continue to give a second that leaf water and give it light in time it will grow into something wonderful and i think for for us this is like life we go through seasons where it seems ugly or unbearable but if we continue to rest in him and know that he has us in his hand in time our season of blooming will come and isaiah 43:18 it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I believe this is the essence of faith. I believe that God will come through even when something looks completely hopeless at the moment. Some of you, you're in this season right here that I'm talking about. We've all been there. We've all been through it. But some of you, you're here. You're in a season that you think seems unbearable, unimaginable. As I read through this, even preparing, I think of all the prayer request cards that we read through every week. And so I know there's people in this room today that you're in this season that you think is 
unimaginable. I can't do it. But if you will press through, even when you can't see progress at all, keep plugging away, keep watering, keep opening up the windows for the sun to come in your dreams, in the promises, in the hope that God's given to you. Keep drinking his living water every day. Keep, keep on, keep pressing in. Don't let your hopes shrivel up like a forgotten plant that hasn't been watered in months. Because in time, something beautiful, whatever that dream is that he's given to you, whatever that promise is that you're holding on to, in time, it will come to pass and you will see something beautiful in your life. So from these lessons that we talked about today, from the succulent, I believe that all of us can take next steps. For some of you in the room today, you're not rooted in God yet because you haven't made that decision to ask Him into your heart and ask Him to be the Lord of your life. So this morning, in a little bit, I'm going to give you that opportunity. For some of you, you just simply need to take steps in daily drinking the living water. If you're feeling dry inside, take Isaiah 12 home with you. Drink from His living water. Drink His living water every day. For some of you, you need to continue to stand firm in your faith. Know that you're in a season, but God is there. He is with you. He will not leave you. You are capable of all things because God is by your side. For some of you, you're doing really well. You are. You're a cute little succulent living life. And that is, and that's awesome. It really is a great season to be in. But he's calling some of you to not be a little succulent all alone. He's calling you like you see sometimes or you may have done it before you take several succulents and you place them in one big planter and it becomes this beautiful centerpiece and for for some of you he's calling you to step step away from being by yourself and get plugged into a small group get around surround yourselves with other believers other little succulents that are drinking from the living water because when you do life with other people that are rooted in him It is a beautiful season. Here at City Hope, we like to say, don't do life alone. God has not called us to do life alone. He's called us to do life together. So don't do life alone. Take that step. Join a small group. Lead a small group. Small group leader signups are happening right now. So that's you. Lead a small group. And if it's your turn just to join a small group, uh, small groups will launch the beginning of June. But this morning as we... And today, I just want to take this time to pray over all of you to start. And then I'm going to pray specifically for those of you who want to take that next step and ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. Pray over you in just a minute. But if we'll all bow our heads and close our eyes. God, we thank you for today. I thank you for showing us through your creation things in our own lives that we can take steps of faith in. I thank you that you are with all of us. You guide us, you lead us, you provide for us. Thank you for giving us strength. Thank you for using seasons in our life to show us what you are capable of. Thank you for your faithfulness in each person's life that is here today. I pray that this week we would all grow in our faith. I thank you that this week we will all take daily drinks from your living water. Help us to see all you have done in our lives. Help us to show others your faithfulness. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to each person in this room and would clearly show what steps of faith we need to take in our own lives. Thank you for moving in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if everybody would continue to keep your heads bowed, your eyes closed, I want to take this time... If you would say, I haven't made that first step yet. I'm not rooted in him yet because I haven't asked him to be Lord of my life. 
in a minute, I'm going to count to three. And if that's you, I would love to for you to raise your hand just so that I know who I'm praying with. We're all going to pray together, but I would love to know who, it, who specifically is making that step for the first time to make that decision. So as I count to three, if you just lift up your hand, one, two, three. Thank you. I see you. I'm excited for you. Thank you for taking that step. And if we'll all pray this together, Father, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you for giving me new life. I confess that I'm a sinner and ask you to forgive me and make me new. Thank you from this day forward, I can trust in you. I can walk through life differently because I have you in me.